So hello, Food Warriors. Welcome to our Dinner Table podcast. I'm Jane, co-founder of Box Divi Food Hubs. And I'm Lee, a Box Divi Food Hub warrior. So Lee, we came up with this idea of Unsupermarket as the name for our podcast, and I thought it might be good to share with our listeners why we named it Unsupermarket and what are some of the aims of the things we're trying to do. Absolutely, Jane. Well, currently there's a duopoly and it's choking and controlling the food supply such that they are able to price gouge and offer unhealthy foods. We need to see more competition and other ways of doing things. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, We've been kind of brainwashed into thinking that supermarkets the only way to purchase our groceries. I'm actually, dare I say, old enough to remember the first supermarket in my suburb. And I remember my mum taking me along with her and horrified that one, she had to help herself. And uh, again, she had the battle with the trolley. (laughs) Well, also importantly, supermarkets make a large portion of their profits from selling junk food. So as a result of people having easy access to high sugar foods, Diabetes 2 is now one of the top diseases in Australia. Yeah, I I understand also that with diabetes 2, you can rectify it by having good food choices um, and a healthier lifestyle, exercising a bit more. Yep, you certainly can. But many people actually think that fresh food is expensive, which it's not. At Box TV, you can save up to 30% on your produce simply by buying as a group from your neighbourhood Box TV Food Hub. It's a three-day order cycle. You choose what you want using the Box TV app. It can absolutely trans- transform the way you shop. Yep. Um, you mentioned also um, previously about price gouging. Um, one of the things about Box TV is that we have price transparency. So members can see what we pay the farmer and wholesaler. And I think that's a really big thing and it's a game changer. And it's also a very unique feature of Box TV. I don't know any other platform that that is that transparent. And I also think one of the greatest things with our group is that we support Australian farmers by, by paying them well and purchasing Australian groceries where we can. Mm. You mentioned that we pay our farmers well. Can you give me an example of how we do that? Yep. Well, we pay 60 cents in every dollar a member spends. Typically a supermarket will pay 30 cents in the in every dollar that a customer spends. So it's a win for the farmer and a win for the member. Okay. Now to our podcast, our very first one, um, we will be um, during our podcast interviewing farmers, food manufacturers, and some of our food warriors. So chefs, mums at home and dads at home cooking, health professionals, and uh, we'll be showing ways to save your wallet and also to save your planet because that's part of our lowering of our carbon footprint that we at Box Divi uh, feel is really important. And in that process, we will find ways for our listeners to save money on their grocery bill, save time and be more informed about where our food comes from. I think actually our farmers' interviews are going to be crackingly interesting. I'm certainly really excited to share what we've learned about our food system and then with our listeners. I certainly know as a hubster now of more than four years that I've learned a lot about where our food comes from. Lee, let's start with our first interview. It's George Portelli. He's from Maruta and that's north of Sydney. So let's go to George. My dad's been in growing um, for at least 50 years, maybe more. (laughs) Um, And then I took a year off after year 11 and just to help him for a year and I'm still here. Uh, Still uh, 25 years later. Well, he definitely got you hooked. Yeah. (laughs) 
So is it just you growing? You have family grow with you? Um, it's me, my mum and dad, and uh, my two brothers, and you got a few workers helping us out. What's been the biggest challenges uh, for you learning to grow with your dad? Um, just integrating um the new technologies, the old technologies, and then um different varieties coming through, like different varieties of lettuce, different varieties of spinach. Um, they're more resistant than the old varieties, obviously. And then just different varieties coming through generally. You said some of the um, varieties are more resistant to pests. Yep. Yeah, they're more resistant to pests. Um, some have a darker color leaf. Some have like, uh, grow, grow quicker. Some have a better flavor. Um, we're always um, researching and looking into new things to um, advance uh, the way we do things. I have heard that plants evolved a bit of taste to deter being eaten, uh, but with selective breeding it's made them more sweeter, more colourful. Yep, and different colours. We've seen a lot of different colours come through, like we used to only do green cabbage, but now like you've, you've got the red cabbage coming in, like you've got different coloured um, bulbs coming in. How do you get a hold of the different varieties? Um, like seed reps always come and uh, present us with uh, the new things that are coming up. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, sometimes we do we do a lot of trials for seed companies. And, right. That's yeah. pretty cool. So they give you a few and then you yes, kind of make a like, judgment. Yeah, sometimes it's forward. only one out of ten that come out good, but like you're only putting a small amount in, so we don't mind seeing the new things that come through mm. and the, the new things that they work on. Like how cabbages can be grown in the beginning, middle, and end of the year now? So that's the, another thing with the varieties. They're improving the varieties so they can grow all year round. So despite having less sun, they still do their whole growth cycle? Yes, because uh, that variety's actually been trained or been selected for that winter variety. So that's why there's ongoing trials of like different, like there's always different things coming through. That's why you can get a cauliflower in the middle of summer. <laughs> Uh, we do most of our seedlings ourselves, um, other than beetroot and parsley, it's direct seeded, but um, like the baby gems, um, we direct seedling, seed into the trays, and then after about four or five weeks, we'll put them into the ground outside. So those are all transplanted after they're grown, but there are some that it's better to directly seed? Yeah. So uh, beetroot, like I said, beetroot is direct seeded into the ground. Um, just because it's going to make a bulb, we don't want to trap it in a cell. But um, a, things like uh, lettuce, baby cos, um, silver beet, um, they're, plant, they're seeded into the trays. And then after about four or five weeks, we'll um, transfer them outside into the uh, field. What would happen if you tried to put them directly in the field? Like, what's the benefit? Um, we're trying to give them a head start. Like, um, and we're the head starts to try and beat the grass. So it's, we use less less chemicals on them and give them a head start outside to beat the grass. So then um, when it gets to picking stage, they're well ahead, the, well ahead of the grass. Oh, you mean like wild grass, so it doesn't compete basically when yeah, it's Yeah, that's right. It's got a competitive, um, it's already competitive before the other grass comes up in, from out of, the, out of the ground. Yeah. How do you work, deal with um, irrigation? Uh, irrigation, we've got a spring-fed dam and a bore. Our bore is about uh, 150 metres deep. And we pump it up and we top up our dam, dam with it. And then we irrigate from the dam onto the crops through the sprinklers. We're on rotation. So um, obviously got winter vegetables, summer crop vegetables. Crop rotation. Crop rotations, yep. And then that, help, that also assists us on um, like uh, fighting like um, pests and like um, soil borne diseases. Why is that? Um, just and nutrients like different different vegetables take different nutrients out of the ground. Like we've got a spinach crop here we might put a lettuce crop on top of it because it's a different family. So lettuce is a different family than, than spinach. Mm. Then the next time after the lettuce we might put a cabbage. That's a different family again and that's sort of rotating the crops in the ground. Right I see. So yeah, you have some pests that go after one thing and then you've pulled it away That's and right. you've got no opportunity. That's and also like the the spinach might take a certain amount of nitrogen, but the lettuce might take potassium out of the ground and then the cabbage might take the calcium out of the ground. So they all 
working together. How do you uh, fertilize? Um, we put a side dressing down. So after we've, when we've planted, we put um, one side dressing and then about two to three week stage, we put another side dressing on it. What's a side dressing? So it's a, um, a synthetic fertilizer. That's got all the, it's like a multi fertilizer that's got calcium, it's got everything in it. The same stuff that you use, like hydroponics? Um, different. Okay. That, like a different mixture of nutrients. Nutrients. Yep. That's built, built for things that are living in the ground. Not in water. Yeah, right. that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, has there been any ways that you've uh, changed the way that you've grown? We're always w working and trying new things. And then one, one thing we've discovered is like um, that if we don't deep plow um, and we sort of use the same um, growing area without deep plowing and using the same compacted beds, um, we're keeping the same nutrients in the ground. And then um, we're, um, it's actually fighting against having more we less weeds because then new weeds can't um, progress into that um, later stage. So with how deep you plow, how has that affected it? So you're not, um, if you deep plow, then you, you're putting the nutrients further down into the soil where we want to keep it in the top, top uh, maybe 20 centimetres of the soil where the plant's roots um, are concentrated in. Okay, right. And because only the top soil is touched, the lower remains compacted and so when it rains there's that's right yeah runoff. and it doesn't wash away into streams and it stays where we want it when we get heavy rain or like when you irrigate constantly irrigating okay so then in turn then we're using less fertilizer and then um yeah the plants just stay healthier they don't get waterlogged because it's not so so deep plowed they're, they're keeping their their roots in that top top zone where it's supposed to be yeah, we're located at Maruda. We're a little bit higher up here. Um, we get that evening breeze. Um, the evening breeze uh, works good in winter because um, it does prevent a lot of frost because um, we're a little bit higher up. And but then it assists us in summer as well because um, it cools things down in the afternoon. So how does that breeze help when you have frost? Um, so it actually blows the blows the frost away. Surprisingly, because um. It increases the temperature and it melts quicker. Do you have anyone else come out on the farm and help you? Yeah, we've got workers, but they're from overseas. Do they stay uh, in the area? So they stay. Then we got on like we got on farm. Um, they stay on farm like, and they're here for like six months turnarounds. Uh, so okay. six months here, then six months back home, and then six months here. So what happened during COVID? They had to stay here. They were here for three years. Wow. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I guess that, you know, how did they feel about that? I mean... They were these... because, like, they, they're happy to come because the, the wages, we pay them the wages that we have to pay them here. Like, we're, they're proper wages, but the wages here are, like, three times, four times as much as what it is back home. Mm. And they've, like, we've had people come back and they've, built houses and like set their families up and like, yeah, they're happy to be here. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it helps their families out heaps. Wow, look at that. And that is just on the outskirts of Sydney. Who would have thought so much of our produce is sourced so close to Sydney? Yeah, and we also have um, sourcing across New South Wales, ACT, Victoria. It's seasonal. So anything that members get at Box Divi will be seasonal. And speaking about seasonal, cooking seasonally is really important. And I thought I'd just explain um, that the person who runs a hub is called a hubster. And our first chef, in fact, is a hubster at Woi Woi, and her name is Trish. And we're going to whisk away with her recipe, a cupcake quiche. Hello, I'm Trish at Box TV Woi Woi. 
Today I'm going to be making vegetable quiches. I've got potato, carrot, zucchini and sweet potato to use. But you could also try put some whatever vegetables you've got are laying around in the fridge that need to be used up. So you could put some broccoli in, some mushrooms. Sun dried tomatoes would go really well in this as well. Um, or some olives and if you wanted ham and bacon I'm sure you could pop these in it as well. Whatever veg you've got use it up really good um, so first off I'm just gonna cut um, my carrots zucchini up and then I'm going to grate them uh, let me just start with that so this is quite time-consuming but I think it'd be nicer to have these grated then chopped up into little pieces it's about 450 grams of vegetables that you need for this recipe All right, so there's that one. We've got the carrot, so I just need to peel that as well. I have made these with the sun-dried tomatoes before, um, and they do taste really good. Okay, that's that one. We'll do a sweet potato as well. There we go. Let's have a look. Okay, and then last up, I've got a potato. I've only got um, spagos. That's what I've been buying lately at Box Dippy because they've been really great value. So um, you can use nardines, you can use chats, whatever you want, you could use. So now here's a nice clean potato. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna chop this up one, chop this one up. Just move that so you can see. They're just small pieces. Don't really want to have a big mouthful of potato, do we? Oops, we lost some. So I've just got the frying pan out. So what we're going to do now is put all this vegetable with some olive oil into the frying pan on the stove, and then we're just going to cook it for about five minutes. So right rear on high, I've got some olive oil. Just tip that through. As you can see, I've got a bit of a broken stove here. I need two plates, but you know, we manage. So that's that, which is good. We'll wait for that to heat up a little bit, then we'll stir that. These are the silicon uh, muffin trays that I will be using for this one today. So the pan is hot enough, so I'll just tip all this in. It just needs a, about five minutes to be cooked. I don't know why I'm smoking here. Oh! Bit of excitement. That whisk away box TV today. <laughs> Just gonna get the cheese. This one's from the chilled Noco natural cheese. I've had this one before. It's really nice. It's got a great flavour on it. So I'll just open that up and it's about 100 grams of cheese. Uh, you can use any cheese, but this one's Norco who box divvy. We get them through box divvy, um, and I really do like this one. So 100 grams. I'm gonna. I'm not weighing it because I like a lot. I like cheese. Um, so I'm gonna go about that much. Might be too much, but you never have enough have cheese. I don't think. So with that, I'm just gonna grate that. I've cleaned out the clean the grater. So I'm just gonna pop that in there and do that again that'll do and i'll just eat that bit so there's our yummy grated cheese which is going to be yum okay so we'll do that um and then i'll just put i'll just do the eggs so we need four eggs and some salt and pepper so some pepper salt and then we've got the hunter valley eggs one, two, three, and four. So they'll just get mixed around. Now the other thing I'm going to add in, which is not part of this recipe, uh, is a red onion relish, which I made about a week ago. 
it's basically uh, just give it a bit more flavor i might put that much in um i'm gonna finish the bottle off actually um so it's red onions red wine vinegar brown sugar i think that's about it and it tastes delicious <laughs> so that will give it a great flavor so here's a close-up of what we've got happening sort of just cooking away nicely a lot of steam I think it's nearly ready actually so yeah that's that's ready nicely nicely done so i'm just going to place all of the cooked veg into the green bowl now with the other bowl that's got the eggs and the relish and the cheese just going to tip that in and then stir it all around not the best well it does it does look the best it's gonna it's gonna taste fantastic all right so that's the veggies and the cheese okay so i'll get the tray so we just get some oil just to spray in the tray so it doesn't stick and then we'll put it onto the baking tray okay so now we just put this vegetable quiche mix and we put it into the muffin trays so just a big one scoop of it into each Now this should fit uh, 12, 12 of the, these muffins here. Now this is where you could put some extra cheese on top if you wanted. If you want to put your ham on or your bacon, you can put that on top as well. So I'll just pop them in. Now these will now go in the oven for the 20 minutes. So I'll just put these on the top, pop tray. Okay, so the timer has just gone off for the 20 minutes. I'll just get them out the oven. Yeah, not bad actually. Oh yeah, they look good. My oven's a bit crazy and it likes to burn things, but uh, I've only got pretty much this one at the moment. So I will let them rest for about five minutes. That is fantastic. There we go. Beautiful. So this was the vegetarian or vegetable muffins that I've made today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and give it a go. They're pretty easy as you can see. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and um, I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Oh wow, Trish, that was fantastic. Listeners, thanks for coming on our very first food journey. More to come and we'll gather at our dinner table once more in a fortnight. If you wish to take part in the podcast, share an interesting food story, tell us how you store food, how to grow food, maybe a story about preparing food, please contact us at hello at unsupermarket.au. Otherwise, look us up at Box Divi and if you've not joined a food hub, then give it a whirl. You'll love the community aspect of it. And don't forget, Unsupermarket, Unsupermarket with Box, with Box Divi. Divi. Unsupermarket. Bye.